Excuse me, this is Chris of the Ancient Scholar. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up where I left off on the peep discussion, and today I'll be talking about what's known as intrinsic peep or auto peep. And auto peep is peep that develops um, atrogenically, or um, it's, it's a kind of peep that we don't necessarily want. Um, it's, it's PEEP in addition to the PEEP that we apply through the mechanical ventilator. And the question is, or I think there's a couple of questions, but let's answer them one by one. I think the first question is, well, why do we not like auto PEEP? Uh, PEEP is good, right? PEEP increases oxygenation and uh, decreases work of breathing. And hopefully you'd recognize from the last video that, yes, PEEP can do that, but PEEP can also cause significant hemodynamic um, consequences in addition to you know, increasing airway pressures and increasing your risk for injury. So PEEP can be a good thing when applied properly. But when we develop this intrinsic PEEP, this is PEEP that we don't necessarily have control over, and this can be very harmful. And at some point, um, if I have too much PEEP, my work of breathing is actually gonna, going to get worse. It's going to increase um, because I may have over-distended alveoli. And then to actually move air in and out of the lungs, I'm going to have to distend them even more. So that can actually lead to a situation where I have increased work of breathing. The, the Young-Laplace equation that I talked about in the last video um, is relevant, but it's only, it only works to a point. I can only make my alveoli so big. Um, before I get to the what I would call the point of diminishing returns, so let's talk. Uh, so, so those are some of the the consequences of auto peep. Um, I will talk about a couple of more consequences as as we talk as we go further into this discussion. So, let's talk about how we develop auto peep. Auto peep is 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 really the result of um, air not being able to get out of the lungs, or what we call air trapping. Um, lots of things can lead to air trapping. Um, obstructive conditions are very um, likely causes of auto peep. So any of your obstructive disorders, um, COPD for example, this, this would include things like cystic fibrosis, bronchiectasis, chronic bronchitis, um, emphysema, and even, even asthma, bronchospasm. It can also, uh, other obstructions could be uh, mucus plugs, uh, secretions, a, tu a very small endotracheal tube, swelling of, of the airways perhaps, um, lots of different things. Anything that leads to the obstruction of airflow or, or increased resistance. There are also some other things that can lead to auto peep or uh, what we call intrinsic peep. And this would include things like a fast respiratory rate. Say somebody is in assist control and they're hyperventilating. If I'm hyperventilating, I'm breathing very quickly, I'm ventilating um, uh, over-efficiently, if you want to look at it that way, what this can lead to is this can lead to decreased amount of time that I spend exhaling. And this does not necessarily, is a situation where I don't necessarily have enough time to exhale um, the breaths that have been delivered. And this, this is um, what we call breath stacking in some cases, where I just get one breath on top of another on top of another, and I just don't have enough time to exhale that. Um, this can also occur, in, um, especially in pressure control ventilation, where I have very long eye times. I'm increasing the eye time to try to increase oxygenation. And uh, if my eye, as my eye time increases, of course, my E time is going to decrease. And if I don't have adequate amount of time to, to exhale, um, I'm going to develop uh, breath stacking. In essence, I'm going to develop auto peep. Um, so that's very common as well. Um, in volume control, this can happen when I decrease my flow. If I have very low flow, that will decrease the amount of time it takes to get the gas in, or, or the eye time, basically, and, or increase the eye time, rather, and it will decrease the E time. So very low flows. So how can we detect auto peep in our patients? And this can be very difficult to detect um, through a clinical assessment. You can look at your patient. They, they may have increased work of breathing. They may be anxious. They may be hemodynamically unstable, tachycardic, and hypotensive. Um, but generally, you know, our, our, our patients are generally going to be acutely ill. 
and there may be other causes of hypotension and tachycardia, on, uh, and our, our list of differential diagnoses may be quite long. So let's talk about some of the, the quick and common ways that we can assess it on a ventilator. And one of the things that I like to use is I like to use the flow time scaler. And if you look at it, what it does is it compares the flow of gas in and out of the lungs to time. So on my y-axis, I have flow, and then I have time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that this is zero flow here. This line here is zero flow. I don't have any flow. Below this line is exhalation, and above this line is inhalation. Okay, just to orient you guys with how the graphic will look. And generally what I'll have is, if I'm in volume control ventilation, I'll, I'll have a, what they call a square waveform. I'll have my peak flow. It'll be delivered for whatever amount of time, and then I'll go into exhalation. And normally what will happen is I'll exhale. This line will come back to the baseline here, and then the next breath will be delivered. And then I'll exhale, it'll come back to baseline, and so on and so forth. When this flow here comes back to the baseline, what that indicates is that I'm exhaling completely. I'm exhaling to the point where there is no more air flowing out of my lungs, or I have zero flow. This is a good thing. This means I'm getting all or most of the air out that was delivered. We like to see this. However, in the situation of auto peep, what will happen is the breath will be delivered, but the expiratory flow will not return to baseline, and another breath will be delivered. It will not return to baseline, and another breath will be delivered. And this initiation, or the beginning of inspiration, while this is below the baseline of zero, is a classic indication of auto peep, or a classic finding for auto peep. So the flow time scale are very important. Um, now, how do we treat auto peep? We can treat auto peep in a lot of different ways. We can suction our patient if they need it, administer bronchodilators. We can change out for a bigger ET tube. We can do a circuit change if there are lots of secretions. We can increase the flow or decrease the eye time. Actually, both. if I decrease the eye time, the flow will increase. If I increase the, the, uh, the flow, the eye time will decrease. That will give us more time to exhale. Um, some other things that we can do is if uh, we can't do those for some reason and the patient's having significant um, increased work of breathing, and one of the things that can occur is with triggering, the patient triggering a ventilator. So if a patient's on a ventilator, and this is actually going to be pressure and uh, time, pressure time waveform. If a patient is on the ventilator, um, what will happen is I'll have a peep, whatever I have in the, the ventilator. Let's say five a peep. So, and this is, of course, zero pressure. I'm always going to have that five a peep there, and then my breath will be delivered, and it'll go back to that five a peep, right? Now, the ventilator recognizes the five a peep is there, and for the patient to trigger the ventilator, um, let's say that it might have a pressure trigger in negative two centimeters of water. The ventilator has to sense that my pressure here will go from five down to three. So if my patient can draw down to three above zero, the ventilator will, will deliver the breath, right? Well, with auto peep, let's say that I have five of auto peep. Well, now I'm at 10, right? because that's my total PEEP. Five of auto PEEP, five of um, ex extrinsic PEEP. Now for the patient to trigger the ventilator, I have to draw down, and uh, my settings at negative two, I have to draw down all the way back to five and then back to two. So I actually have to draw down negative seven instead of negative two, because the ventilator doesn't necessarily recognize the auto PEEP. So you can see that this increases my work of breathing significantly. And one of the things we can do is I can increase the PEEP on the ventilator um, to about maybe 80% of whatever the auto PEEP is. Maybe I can increase the PEEP to 8, and that will make it easier to trigger. Now we need to do that very carefully, 
And I think the optimal approach would still be to take care of the underlying auto peep. 